others, the ones we love. And so he was... Uh, seems that we once again have a true crime miniseries on our hands with the HBO Max television show The Staircase, which documents the life of Michael Peterson, an American novelist who was convicted of ending the life of his wife, Kathleen, despite maintaining that she passed after falling down the stairs. Michael has a history with an extremely sketchy past, but due to the State Bureau of Investigation's analyst leading on the jury about the strength of some evidence, Peterson's sentence got reduced and he's currently a free man. So now we catch up with what he and and his children are up to now. Today we're covering Michael Peterson. Tomorrow though, you decide. Let us know in the comments down below who you think we should cover on the next episodes of Where Are They Now? While you're there, smash that like button as the kids say if you like this video so we know to keep making more like it. Let's get into it. Well, I'll be honest, I can't delve too much into the nitty gritty details of this case due to YouTube algorithmic reasons. I will go briefly into Peterson's shady past and more so dive into what happened to him after his crime and what he's doing now. So basically, once Michael got out of university, he was hired by the US Department of Defense to research arguments that would support increasing military involvement in Vietnam during the Vietnam War. That is all kinds of messed up, especially because the Vietnam War was largely unnecessary and also America lost, even though they pretend that they didn't. A few years after this job, Michael enlisted as a Marine to serve in the war, but only three years later, he got an honorable discharge with the rank of captain after a car accident in Japan that left him with a permanent disability. Michael married his first wife, Patricia, wherein they lived in Germany for a while. While there, they befriended the couple Elizabeth and George Ratliff, as well as their two kids. After they became close, the husband, George, passed. Then, in 1985, Elizabeth also died, and Michael became the guardian of her two children. Two years later, Michael and Patricia, his first wife, got divorced. Elizabeth and George's kids stayed with Michael, while Michael and Patricia's kids stayed with their mother, before eventually moving to North Carolina with their dad to live with them. So then, Michael had custody of four children, two of whom were his close friends, and two of whom were with his first wife. During this time, Michael became a notable author, documenting his time in the Vietnam War and in the Marines. He was also a journalist, who became known for criticizing the North Carolina police force, more specifically the district attorney of the town they lived in, whose name is James Harden Jr. Remember his name, that'll be useful later. A few years into living in North Carolina, Michael met his new wife, Kathleen, and her daughter from a previous marriage. So now together, they have a combined total of five children to look after. Then in 2001, Kathleen was found by Michael at the foot of the staircase of their home, having passed away from a fall down the stairs. The preceding court case, wherein he was accused of causing Kathleen's accident and pled not guilty was the longest in North Carolina history. It was found that Elizabeth Ratliff, Michael's friend from Germany, passed away in an extremely similar fashion. She had been complaining about headaches for weeks and then apparently fell down a flight of stairs and succumbed to her injuries. While Kathleen's defense team didn't accuse Michael of causing Elizabeth's accident, they did use it as further evidence of a method through which Michael could harm Kathleen and make it seem like an accident. The forensics team found that there was a lot of evidence that led people to believe that Michael Peterson was in fact guilty of his crimes. It became especially apparent when it was stipulated that Michael had a secret life as a bisexual man who cheated on Kathleen with another man. In a weirdly homophobic statement made by Kathleen's defense team, they stated, quote, Kathleen would have been infuriated by learning that her husband, who she truly loved, was bisexual and having an extramarital relationship, not with another woman, but a man, which would have been humiliating and embarrassing to her. We believe that once she learned this information, that an argument ensued and a homicide occurred. They used this as the main defense for the argument that Michael is guilty. He was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Denial of parole requires premeditation, and the jury accepted that while the crime was considered spur of the moment, premeditated doesn't always mean days or hours before the event occurred. It could also mean seconds before. That one's a bit weird and a little loose to me. It kind of defeats the purpose of a planned execution if it's literally seconds before it happens. Either way, in 2003, Michael was admitted to prison. Now, the HBO Max series, The Staircase, is a follow-up to the documentary about the case with the same name. The documentary was filmed in 2004, a year after Michael was admitted to prison, although newer episodes were added to cover more recent developments in 2013 and 2018. But in 2017, 14 years after being sent to prison, Michael was released after his charge was reduced to accidental harm and he was resentenced to time that he had already served. The charge was reduced after it emerged that the State Bureau of Investigations analyst, of whom Michael had previously intensely scrutinized at his journalism job, you know, the one I told you to remember, heavily misled the jury about the strength of some evidence regarding 
things. Misleading a jury is a massive misstep, and it's thought that he did so because he had a personal grudge against Michael. I don't even know why he would be allowed to be involved in a case if there was a known negative relationship between Michael and the investigator. Seems like that should probably qualify for conflict of interest. But either way, it meant that in 2017, Michael was allowed to walk free from jail. After he left prison, surprisingly, he decided to move into a two-bedroom condo in the same town where he and Kathleen lived. Most ex-convicts would choose to move to a different town to start anew. I mean, I would in that situation. Yet Michael decided to settle back down in this town where everyone knew his name and the gruesome crimes he was attached to. The defense attorney stated, quote, he's living in Durham, the town. I'm not sure why he's living in Durham, but he is. He's in a ground floor apartment with no stairs, and that's a really important accommodation which is kind of a funny thing to say in a dark way. But since his release from prison, Michael is now 78 years old and has written two books about his trial, his experience in prison, and now his life as a free man. The proceeds from his novels have been donated to charity. As for his five children, the case divided the whole family. Kathleen's sister and her daughter believe that he is guilty of ending his wife's life, while Todd and Clayton, his kids from his first marriage, and the two children that he raised of Elizabeth's believe that he is innocent. As for Michael, he also maintains his innocence and that Kathleen's passing was a genuine and horrible accident. However, in 2008, Kathleen's daughter obtained a $25 million settlement from Michael in a wrongful death lawsuit. Kathleen's daughter did so apparently not to gain any money from Michael because she knows he doesn't have $25 million, but to dissuade him from making any money off of his experience by selling books or media, as he would be obliged to give its profits to Kathleen's daughter. As of right now, after Michael was released, he and the four children he's raised have stayed out of the spotlight. It seems like they've got a good relationship with Michael, but in the documentary that the HBO show is based on, it was revealed that Martha, one of Elizabeth's kids, suffers from intense anxiety. Quote, I used to suffer a lot from really bad nightmares. I used to have really bad panic attacks in public spaces because of being in the trial. My body and my whole nervous system will think that something like the trial is happening. For me, it's like my heart beats faster, I can't breathe, and I worry that I'm going to pass. Out. While it appears now that the case is closed with no one intending to reopen it, there are so many questions still not revealed. Namely, is Michael truly guilty of ending the life of his wife due to her anger over him being bisexual? Also, did he actually have an affair? In my research, it seems like it was suggested but never proven. Either way, Michael had to file for bankruptcy in 2018, so Kathleen's daughter succeeded, making sure that he didn't make any money off of the books about the trial. And now, how do you feel about how that went down? Do you think that he's guilty or not? Do you think that his time in prison was enough or that the justice system let Kathleen down? Let us know in the comments down below. Please also subscribe to this channel. It would help me out a whole bunch. Thank you for watching this episode of Where Are They Now? I've been your host, Sierra. See you guys next time.